Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully having an amazing day. Well, that was quite an event that AMD hosted for us, wasn't it? There were a ton of exciting details concerning RDNA 3 and the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX were both confirmed. They are very impressive products. The pricing of these next generation cards is considerably cheaper than I think what many people predicted. And they also look very competitive. It's going to be very interesting to see how the GPU market changes over the next several months as these cards launch and subsequently we start to see the product stack of both companies shift. And of course, we're going to be discussing all of that in this video right after this message from the sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So let's start things out with the very basics, shall we? The RX 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT both launched December the 13th. I'm going to be interested to see what availability is like for these cards. In other words, are we going to get high volume? And generally speaking, I will also be very interested to see how well the 7900 XT sells because it's only a hundred bucks cheaper than the 7900 XTX. Yup, 999 and 899 respectively. I honestly was shocked that we are only looking at a hundred US dollars price difference between the two cards, but that's what we heard. Um, from AMD themselves, and it's honestly a very interesting situation. This puts them at a considerably cheaper price than NVIDIA's flagship, but of course, pricing doesn't mean anything until we know the performance, and that's where things start to get quite interesting. We'll be talking about that more in just a moment, because first of all, let's just give a quick overview as to the specifications of these cards. So the XTX features 96 compute units or 12,288 stream processors, 10,752 to its slightly smaller brother, 20 gigabytes of GDDR6 for the lower end card and 24 gigabytes for the higher end card, 96 megabytes of infinity cache versus 80 megabytes of infinity cache. None of that is probably going to surprise many of you who have been watching this channel or following RDNA free news for any length of time. But what is quite intriguing is we got confirmation that the total board power is just 355 watts. That's basically in line with what I heard and released as a news video just a couple of days ago as an exclusive. Technically speaking, I was out by 5 watts. I heard it was 350, but hey, whatever. The lower end SKU, the 7900 XT, meanwhile, is 300 watts. As you can probably imagine, AMD made a really big deal of the power consumption figures. Now, ultimately speaking, the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte is 320 watts. So technically speaking, the 7900 XTX is a little higher and the 7900 XT is a little lower. Of course, at the moment, we don't have enough performance data because, well, the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte card is not even available yet. So it's going to be very interesting to see what type of benchmarks we get from both of these cards and what and just how efficient each of them are, especially when playing around with things like overclocking. I also just want to spend a second to mention that the 7900 XTX, I have heard, can go up to 450 watts for AIB custom cards. I've mentioned this several times in the past, and that I'm pretty confident in. Um, I don't know what effect that is going to have in the clock frequency department, because as you can probably imagine, uh, when it comes to clock frequency, there is obviously quite a lot of uh, impact that it has. Speaking, though, as to the performance side of things, this is where things start to get a little curious. So, basically speaking, we have a new unified compute unit. This has been considerably changed over RDNA 2. I'm going to go over this pretty briefly because, basically, there is a lot of detail that we still don't have yet. And, um, well, 
we of course will be going a lot more in depth into this when we start learning about it but basically it's a dual issue simd design um, so the instruction rate from what AMD have stated is that we're looking at a two times instruction issue rate over the previous generation, 165% more transistors uh, in the same in the same space. And further to all of this, well, you can see yourself on screen that we have a confirmation as to the vector general purpose register being 50% larger. There are also some changes to the AI accelerator, which is up to 2.7 times more performance than the previous generation, and I think this is probably going to have a big impact in FSR 3. Uh, we also have, of course, second generation RT cores. Now, RT was a really big weakness for the previous generation cards. Now, I think it's really important at this stage to talk about performance numbers. So let's talk a little bit about the performance. Now, before I get into this any depth at all, I want to say that there are a ton of questions I still have with this. Like, first of all, I would love to have seen a side-by-side -side comparison. We are still left with questions because they also gave a lot of benchmarks with FSR enabled, but we don't know what FSR settings were for performance. So, yeah, I, I really want to see more in-depth benchmarking. I'm sure that they're going to do some type of update or at the very least i would encourage you guys of course to wait for reviewers to get hold of the cards because ultimately no matter how promising something is i don't care if it's from nvidia intel microsoft whatever wait until you get reviews unless like you're super confident that the product's going to be good um but anyway the 7900 xtx is allegedly up to 1.7 times faster versus a 6950 xt now you can look at tech power up and roughly speaking the 6950 xt is about 10 percent faster than the 6900 xt of course it does depend on the games and I've also again heard that the custom AIB cards are 450 watts. So I'm assuming that that's going to be close to the two times that we were hearing about so much in rumors. That's pretty impressive as a generational uplift in performance. Now, we could also start doing some interesting stuff. We could also look at what NVIDIA have managed to achieve with the RTX 4090, for example. So we can go to Tech Power Up and we can look at a couple of games there. So NVIDIA were using the RTX 4090 um, against the 1390 Ti quite frequently. And if we were to type in 1.5 times for um, you know an average we can see that that's roughly the difference at 4k of the rtx 3090 ti uh again this is using just standard you know rasterization performance versus the 4090 now interestingly we can actually do a little bit of a comparison here because for example they have benchmarks of watchdogs legion and according to tech power ups numbers with the 6950 xt they scored about 64 frames a second so if we increase that by 1.5 times we're looking at around 96. it is worth noting though that we have such precious few details as to the performance and also is it really 1.5 or is it 1.54 or is it 1.51 or is it 1.47 or something like that because obviously that can have a big impact i think it's fair to say as well that the game it Itself is going to have a really big um well let's just say a really big impact in performance um i would probably say to you guys that i'm expecting kind of close to rtx 4090 figures but ultimately i don't think there's enough performance data here to really extrapolate i could probably give you guys some more examples and i would encourage you to check some of this out yourself it's quite late at the moment in the uk so i will be going into this much more detail over the next couple of days but it is rather interesting. Um, Watch Dogs Legion, they're saying it's a 50% speed up. You can see Cyberpunk is 1.7 times speed up. And obviously, ray tracing performance has also seen a significant uplift as well. So one thing that was not confirmed by AMD, of course, is the existence of Vcash variants of RDNA 3. Now, we know that they are most likely planned at the very least for N31, but potentially N32 as well. If you missed this, Astronomics actually leaked a lot of this information. But basically, it doubles the amount of the Infinity Cache from 96 megabytes up to 192. Uh, obviously, that does have some performance ramifications. So what I personally think is this is probably going to add maybe 5 to 10% on, in terms of game performance. And I've personally heard that the 7950 XT is probably going to be the Vcache variants. 
and I'm assuming AMD are going to be holding that back for the RTX 4090 Ti. Now, don't forget, a lot of the performance rumors we're hearing of two times faster than Nave 21 were all to do with the 6900 XT. They were not to do with the 6950 XT. So I'm assuming that with the V cache, it's going to be roughly, not quite, but close to two times N21. But that's if they actually release this thing. I'm going to be very interested, to be honest, what AMD's strategy in terms of pricing for the Vcache chips would be. And also, are they really going to just wait for RTX 4090 Ti, or are they going to hold them back even longer and potentially do some type of big refresh? It's going to be very interesting to see what that strategy is. There is actually a ray tracing slide that AMD put forward, and well, we can see that it's FSR. Now, there's a couple of issues I have with FSR. Um, the thing that really bothers me is they didn't mention what the quality setting is. Now, you could probably do a little bit of digging around if you have a 6950 XT. I don't have a 60, uh, 6950 XT on hand to do any testing. I do have a 6800 XT, so I'll probably do a little bit of digging around. But um, yeah, in Hitman, for example, we can see it's 90 FPS versus 57 FPS. 72 FPS for Dying Light 2 versus 39. So there is a significant performance uplift in ray tracing, but I don't think it's going to be on NVIDIA's level. Uh, I think NVIDIA is still going to have the ray tracing advantage here. But with that said, it is still pretty early in RDNA 3's life cycle. And I'm sure that as developers start optimizing for the hardware, we're probably going to see some performance improvements. Generally speaking, though, I think that the performance here is quite impressive. I just really wish that AMD gave more solid information um, regarding their card's performance because I feel that there is a lot of marketing here, which I don't really like. I would prefer more solid information. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Like, I genuinely am still very excited for the product itself, but I still feel like I don't, 100% know how it performs. Um, I'm still left with a lot of questions regarding the performance, and I really hope that we start to get a lot more of this cleared up over the next while. But other than that, there was, of course, confirmation that FSR3 is going to be incoming. It's worth noting that in terms of FSR3, well, there was basically very little information provided. For example, is it interpolation? What? What? How is it being? How is it happening? Now, what they did state is it's up to two times more FPS than FSR two. But again, because we have such few details, now I did leak that Fidelity FX Super Resolution three was in the works. I'm surprised actually. I mentioned this a couple of times. I didn't think it was going to be announced yet because I was hearing it wasn't released until next year. It is coming next year, so I am surprised it was announced. I think this is probably a technology that they weren't initially going to announce here um, because I heard it was going to be early next year, the announcement at some event. But they clearly wanted to say, hey, look, we have something as well that's kind of similar to DLSS3. I'm not even going to slightly um, guess how the technology is working at this point. Like, you probably extrapolate some ideas. But how it works versus DLSS3, I have absolutely no idea for, cer for certainty. I'm guessing it's going to utilize the new instructions on RDNA3, but it's going to be very interesting, honestly, to see how all of that stuff comes... So how all of this stuff comes together. I will say, though, in general, I am very interested to see what AMD brings to the table here. There is a ton of details that I am missing because, quite frankly, there is a lot of stuff to kind of micro-analyze in this conference. And I'm sure over the next several days, a lot more information will become abundantly clear. Just to summarize, then, my thoughts, the pricing is absolutely excellent. I'm really happy with this pricing. And this is the thing, guys, like... I don't think AMD needed to, to, to put their event like this because the price is so good, like 899 and 999, even if it's 20% slower than the 4090 for sake of discussion, I think people will be more than okay with that given how energy efficient the cards are. Um, 
but yeah it's going to be very interesting to see when you know all the marketing stuff subsides just how well these things perform there is also a lot of stuff to be said also for the power efficiency on the lower end side of things it's going to be very interesting to see what amd does with n33 in particular you would probably i mean i i put out a leak quite a long time ago that i was hearing that those cards were going to be really freaking cheap like you know potentially mid 200 us dollar mark um i don't like speculating on price because stuff can change at the last minute for example um i leaked at well i basically put on twitter that the pricing was really good because i actually got told the pricing several hours before the event um but i didn't want to say what it was because i got some of this information prior to the event uh, but I didn't want to say because I just didn't want to spoil the events given it was today. Like, if it was, like, three weeks ago I got the pricing information, fine, I'd leak it. But it, it made me feel kind of like, a, you know, kind of crappy human being to, like, just give all the information a couple of hours before the event. But what I will say is that um, one of my sources told me that they were told... Um, 899 and then 1099 but all of the other sources had said it was 899999 so i'm guessing the price got reduced for the flagship model by 100 bucks but as always we can only wait and see but that said guys i think that's just about it for this particular video it's been a bit of a bitsy one but i have so many mixed thoughts on these cards and i'm sure that there's a lot of stuff that i missed regarding this um Again, I'm watching this pretty late, and I'm still getting over, uh, well, getting absolutely trashed the other day with, um, well, basically a stomach bug, so yeah, that hasn't been fun. So, yeah, um, let me know what your thoughts are on RDNA3, and also give me a DM on Twitter or whatever, and let me know if I've missed anything. Again, I will be very interested to see what happens in terms of clarification from amd and actually independent benchmarks it's going to be very interesting one thing's for certain i think that the cards in terms of excitement level they're going to be really 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 cool i'm very excited and i think we are going to have a nice competitive amd for this generation even if they're not going to outperform the rtx 4090 ti honestly i'm more than okay with that if they are price competitive take care of yourselves guys bye for now